Manuel Esquivel may have been the strangest politician ever, rigorous and practical rather than pandering. Dean Barrow was his deputy prime minister, understudy and eventual successor. There was no way he would ever take the path of least resistance. He would mollycoddle no one, including uh, the voters in his constituency. The question is, how the hell did such a man succeed so spectacularly <laughs> to the point where he was a two-term prime minister? It has to be that perhaps uh, because his other qualities, his non-political qualities, were so extraordinary. And probably the first question you're asking is, if he was so extraordinary, how could he retrench almost 800 public officers at Christmas in 1995? Shane Williams produced a documentary looking at the life of Sir Manuel, and that's the first question he had. Well, one of the first stories I heard, one of the first stories I can remember in news, I mean stories overall, was the retrenchment story and the VAT story. So I was in middle school at the time, and even from that young age, I always knew that I would want to one day meet this man and ask him, what was he thinking? So when I got the opportunity to do this interview with him when he was being honored by Help Age, I finally got the chance to ask him. And what I learned was this was an individual, this was a man who was trapped in a conflict between the truth of science and the optics and propaganda of politics. In science, you have a problem, you have a methodology, and you solve it. The country was on the brink of devaluation. The solution was to put in these austerity measures and to save the country from economic crisis. But in politics, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. You have to factor in how will this poll and how will this affect the next election. So I learned within an hour that Mr. Esquivel was no politician. During the time of the retrenchment, he did not show how much it affected him. But I am certain with my dealings with him that it affected him gravely. None of us wished the retrenchment. I think we all accepted after he laid bare all the facts that retrenchment was necessary. But there was then an issue as to the timing. It came around Christmas time and we were saying, well, surely you can wait until sometime in the new year. And Manuel Esquivel being Manuel Esquivel said, no, this has to happen. I'm not going to uh, waffle. I'm not going to not play it absolutely straight. I'm not going to postpone the inevitable. Um, we're going to do this now and we will take our licks. We, expect that people will understand because people are thinking sentient human beings. Um, so he refused to see matters through uh, a political lens. And while it could be infuriating, ultimately you ended up having to respect the man. But that respect is mostly retrospective. At the time, he was loath and the UDP was savaged in the general election of a few years later. You can't mince words, Esquivel was a political failure. I had very little interest in propaganda. And for many people, that was a handicap, because people love propaganda, you know. But, um, and you needed to convince people Yes, we're doing the right thing, but you're doing the right thing, but not for your own benefit. You know, as a politician, you should be doing things what is going to be the best thing for people. You know, you and Manuel Esquivel are two of the strangest people to ever enter politics. Two of I the know. Two non-political non people. 
two right two of the most mismatched people for correct politics. i agree with you the consistency is that neither of you all were able to stay in politics for long periods mm-hmm. unlike people like said musa oh, barrow mm-hmm. george price because it was about politics period it was about politics and you all were lousy at politics we are lousy we are complete disaster and a failure as politician don't a failure as a politician perhaps but an impeccable public figure a man who defined integrity and rejected venality it's not something he had to trumpet it's not something he had to noise abroad because it was so inherent in him that was manuel esquivel uh, that is clearly the most outstanding attribute that he possessed and it was so easily and naturally identified with him but nof said there was no need for anything more the country was ready for his integrity the country was ready for his honesty the country was ready for a new direction in my view the country was ready for the manuel esquivel new direction and that direction often meant a head on collision against some tough challenges and that's where esquivel proved that he was also a strong leader right off the bat when he took office in 1984 at the age of 44 what we inherited when we came into power the day we took office the IMF came to the government and said listen this is what you're going to do so immediately there was no no room to develop they said this is a state you're in and this is our solution you know he went through some some very stressful times certainly <clears throat> 1984 coming into office and when you got to work you meet the IMF there yeah, yeah yeah and i know that the confrontations with the Ashraf alliance also um in the second term were very stressful you know we had the the golden share had been sold they had the sealer shares at bl um what do you recall of him in those times of of extreme stress and having to face off worthy adversaries and formidable adversaries the man was pure steel in those circumstances and i will say <clears throat> he also had the great comfort of being able to rely uh, in terms of dealing with the IMF in terms of dealing with the Ashcroft alliance on his lifelong friend one net vasquez net was as you would know better than anyone else absolutely not mercurial but passionate um driven uh exuberant manuel was the polar opposite but together they made one hell of a team the likes of which will not be replicated in this country so in the broad view esquivel was a man apart and surely not the kind that we'll see in public life again now one thing that what was different about him he had to quit his job he had to end his career his pension leave his, his pension he leave his pension to enter into something that is not promised there is no chance you you cannot be certain that you will be successful as a politician and to leave such a successful career nobody would ever do something like that today i can assure you that he has been able to not mix his emotion with his ability to manage the country we had a group of people that i think has shown themselves to be nationals most more than political persons this is what made this man uh, so absolutely different so absolutely superior